what happens, what are we at risk for if one of these perforates? Do you know what perforate means? No. It just means like explodes. And so there's a hole. Peritonitis. Perfect. Peritonitis, which is risk for? Um, death, right? Can sepsis. You die? Yep, sepsis. It leads to sepsis. So all of that peritoneal sac. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Sepsis is like 50% mortality rate. Um, peritoneal sac just gets inflamed. It's really vascular. It gets in, like the bacteria can get to the bloodstream really easily and that can turn into sepsis, which means like when bacteria is in the vasculature, it causes vasodilation. And so the blood pressure tanks, that's kind of what happens with sepsis. Mm -hmm. So sepsis is just like bacteria like in your whole body? Bacteria in the blood vessels. In the blood vessels, mm -hmm. okay. So peritonitis can lead to that. Let's talk about peritonitis. That's a big one. Okay. What are some causes of peritonitis? Like a rupture of organ. Good. What else? We talked about it last unit with ascites, a procedure that they would do to remove the fluid in the ascites, like with ascites. Do you remember what that's called? Uh -oh. Do you remember what it's called? Well, they they Good. Paracentesis. The paracentesis doesn't cause peritonitis, does it? It can. Oh, okay. Yes. It can cause an okay. Yep. If they don't use sterile technique good enough, or if they don't, if they break sterile technique, there we go, um, they can be introducing a bunch of bacteria into the, um, what is it called? Peritoneum. Um, where is my slide? There we go. So anything that introduces bacteria into the peritoneum can cause peritonitis. So whenever you have a patient with um, who just had paracentesis, who had trauma to the abdominal wall, you need to be watching for signs and symptoms of peritonitis. Let's have some signs and symptoms. Um, fever. Good. Fever. Pain. Pain. Maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to be in lots of pain, especially something called rebound tenderness. So if you push on it and then it pops and then you pop it out, like it'll hurt worse than when you push it in. The rebound tenderness is um, is in peritonitis and also in hernias, correct? Inguinal hernias or not? Um, more with appendicitis. Appendicitis, okay. Mm -hmm. Hernias are painful, but it's mostly just like a general, or like a specific pain to that area. It's not gonna hurt when you like push on it and then when like, it's not gonna do the rebound tenderness as much. Okay. Um, abdominal distension, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, things like that. Elevated white blood cells. Yes, yep. So what are some things that we can do to diagnose peritonitis? Abdominal x Mm-hmm. What are we looking for in an, an abdominal x-ray? Are we gonna be able to see the inflammation really? The inflammation actually won't really necessarily be visible in the x-ray. What we're looking for is a perforated bowel. Um, we're looking for the actual cause of peritonitis. So if we find that they've got a knife sticking in them that we didn't see from the outside, then we will for sure know. Or like, <laughs> Um, a diverticulum that burst, we'll see that on the x-ray. Um, paracentesis, it says on here, is one of the diagnostic tests. They can go in and kind of take out um, some of the fluid in there and see if there's bacteria in it. That way they can specifically target that bacteria rather than just give a broad spectrum antibiotic. So then mm -hmm. antibiotics is one of the things that we can do for treatment. Um, NG tubes are also to help with the distension. Um, they'll kind of relieve some of the pressure in the abdomen. Um, also, if it's a problem with like a perforated bowel, then it will, uh, they can take all of that fluid and anything that would go through, you know, like out, 
so nothing is being digested in the intestines.